I am so excited to finally test, to put this Quadro P2000 to the test with Plex to see how well it can perform. That my first video about it is going to be testing the Quadro P2000 with AMD. If you guys didn't watch a previous video where I built this little wet bench here, this is the Praxis test bench. Basically, it allows me to add and remove stuff to it very easily. Uh, so this is exactly what it's for. It's for installing and building, testing, and then tear it all down and do it with something else. But today I wanna to test the Quadro P2000 and I wanna test it with AMD. And I know what you're thinking. You probably got Ryzen on the mind and you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, how did Jason get Ryzen already? He must've drove to Micro Center and spent six hours in the car and bought a Ryzen CPU and brought it back and now he's going to test it with Ryzen. How amazing. Did not actually, because the Micro Center that was three hours away said they had only one in stock and it's three hours away. So by the time I get there, they probably won't have one. So because I am eager to test out the P2000 and how well it performs with Plex, I'm gonna do something pretty, pretty sad actually. But I'm kind of interested in see how this is gonna turn out. Whether you're protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi, bypassing regional filters, or just simply wanting to download something without the worries of a government or a corporation not liking you for it, a VPN service is a must-have solution. And depending on where you're located, it could be hard to find a VPN fast enough for daily use. That's why the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee of NordVPN is so valuable. Because even though I can tell you I get great speeds and reliability, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. By visiting nordvpn.com slash byte or clicking the link in the video description below, you can test these speeds out for yourself with a heavy discount. And with 30 days to prove it's worth, it's a safe way to ensure you're getting what you paid for. For my test today, I'm digging deep. I'm going old school. An AMD FX. I don't know exactly which FX it is, but I'll know more once I get it built. But this thing, this thing is old. Now, if memory serves me correctly here, this should have CPU cooler and everything kind of sort of installed. Oh man, this thing is just old. Look at that. I put this in here just for storage, but MSI 970A-G43. There you go. Now you can see it. I mean, it should work. This thing was not at its prime when I took it down and replaced it with something else. So this is gonna be interesting. And while I know this is not a Ryzen build and I really, really, really want to do a Ryzen build, I ordered a Ryzen, a 3800X or 3700X. I forgot, it's the only one that was in stock with Newegg, but I did get the MSI Meg uh, godlike motherboard. So that thing was like twice the cost of the damn processor. So that's on order. It said it should be here Tuesday and I wanna check that out, but that does not mean that I cannot test out something that I've been curious about. And that is if you were to put a P2000 you know, which is pretty much possibly the king of value to, you know, performance when it comes to Plex transcoding. If you were to put a P2000 into some super old or cheap motherboard slash CPU combo and it performs amazingly, then does that mean that really all you need is a P2000 and the rest just kind of doesn't matter? I don't know. I mean, obviously when I pair the P2000 with something like Ryzen or maybe an Intel 9900, it's gonna be amazing. But what if it's not paired with something that's amazing? What if it has a huge CPU bottleneck? That's interesting. I love this test bench already. This thing is amazing. And because I can't figure out how to get this to hold on fans, I'm just gonna put this down in the, uh, eh, it works category. Now, I'm pretty sure that I can't use my 970 Pro M.2. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go out on a limb here and say NVMe is not supported, but I do have a Samsung 860 Evo that I'm going to use for the not only the operating system, which by the way I'm going to run Windows 10 just because it's easy and I'm going to be using a Quadro and it's just it's going to make things a lot easier, but uh, I'm going to use the 500 gig to also hold the demo file that I'm going to be testing, which is obviously going to be back to the future because that's kind of my go-to file that I use to test. Uh, so. Yeah, I guess I have to take this off and, and install the SSD. 
Plus I got a lot of wiring to do with the power. Now this is the uh, AMD Athlon FX processor. I think it's like a 40, God, it's been so long, 4300 or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly which one. I'll know when I get into the motherboard, into the BIOS and actually configure and get everything set up. I'll be able to check that out. Um, but I know it is only four cores and I'm pretty sure there's no hyper threading on this. So this is gonna be as basic as possible, which means that if there is gonna be a bottleneck, I'm going to experience it here. Uh, hopefully though, once I get Windows installed, Plex installed, and I enable the hardware transcoding, um, you know, maybe it won't really matter what the processor is. And maybe I'll be able to get, you know, rock star performance out of this P2000, uh, even with the world's most jankiest board. I don't know. And here it comes, the moment of truth. I have everything plugged in. I think it should be good to go. So now, now I'm going to see if this entire thing is going to come to a screeching halt when it doesn't boot. Now boot. Now boot off. Okay. Well, let's try that again. Ooh, that's annoying. It was actually already on. I turned it off and then tried to boot it. Genius. Now this is going to be Windows 10 1903, so uh, yeah. Oh, I was wrong, look at that. That is a 6-core Athlon FX 6350. 6-core, 3.9 gigahertz, and DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz. 8 total gigabytes of it. So I had some predictions coming into this. I figured that a P2000 would obviously get bottlenecked by an old CPU that's not capable of doing very much. And I was right, but I'm actually a little surprised that it did as well as it did. Pretty much through my testing, I was able to get 12 reliable transcoded, hardware accelerated transcoded, that means encoding and decoding with the P2000 all at the same time. Now I actually ended up having to use the tablets that I have, which these actually became a lifesaver because I was actually having some issues getting the web GUI, the web interface to play a video file. Anything past four or five, the web interface is just derping out on me. And this was consistent not only on my DVR box, but on my laptop and my main computer. I did a reset and everything. I couldn't figure out why, but good thing is I had these tablets and they were able to test everything. So I got seven of these galaxies, one of this Nexus, then an Apple iPad and a laptop. And then on top of that, I have my DVR system that I was remoted into and my regular computer. Now I was able to get 12 streams at the same time. And when I tried to go for a 13th, I would actually get errors pop up. Uh, the iPad I was trying to add for a 13th and it would actually pop up and say it was incapable of transcoding it. But taking a look at the performance on the actual box itself, the GPU is running like 40 to 50% on average utilization. But that CPU was pegged at 100% and boy, was it struggling. In fact, doing something as simple as running an IP config command in the command prompt just to see what the IP address of the machine was, it took a long time just for that to print to the box. So this is a demonstration of how slow the computer was actually. So the CPU was pegged, and that was definitely the bottleneck for the Plex Media Server. But I was still able to get 12 streams at the same time. That's using, what, maybe $150 worth of old hardware, if that, with a P2000, which you can get for anywhere between $250 to $450, just depending on where you buy it from and whether or not you get a good sale. And just to test my numbers, I actually went in there and disabled the hardware accelerated transcoding just to see what the Athlon FX 6350 could do by itself. And I could get three reliable streams 100% all the time and most of the time I could get four but even right now I have the fourth stream running this is one of them I got another 
the one running on the laptop. Even as I speak, that fourth stream kind of buffers in and out. It's usually playing back just fine, but there are some times where it starts to buffer, so it is unreliable. So as I can say right now, the FX6350 processor is only capable of three reliable transcodes at the same time. So I go from three all the way up to 12 reliable transcodes, almost 13, but definitely not capable. 12 reliable transcodes just with the P2000, and the P2000 is only running 40, 50, maybe 60% on some spikes, percentage utilization throughout. Okay, last minute addition to the video. I actually made this, encoded it, started to upload, went out to mow my lawn, and then someone on Twitter was like, what about 4K transcoding with the P2000? So that's a great point. I actually really don't believe in 4K transcoding at the moment just because of the whole HDR to SDR issue that you get with uh, graying out your video. So I hardly ever think about it. It's still a good point. Some people might want it and the results are in. I'm a little let down. Basically, the CPU doesn't seem totally pegged out and the P2000 is only using about 30 to 40% of its processing power, but I really can only get three, but it's not very reliable. So I can only get a reliable two streams at the same time. Basically, I'm playing Ghostbusters right now on three different tablets. It is a 45 megabit per second file, and it's encoded in HEVC, of course. Uh, it's not HEVC B profile, which is a very specific thing with the P2000 because P2000 cannot handle B profile which kind of sucks, but you know, I guess it is what it is. Either way, 45 megabits per second, all the way down to four megabits per second. And I can technically get three going, but they just don't stay going. So I'm gonna have to say that it's a solid two transcoded streams at the same time. Now I actually forgot to turn hardware acceleration on and I try to play a file and all it did was spin and wouldn't start the video file. So I think without it, it's probably not even capable of doing one on this CPU, which doesn't actually matter. This isn't a relevant CPU, but the point is, is I go from basically zero to two. So there you have it, 4K. So this is gonna be interesting. I mean, I tested this with an old AMD out-of-date processor. Obviously this pass mark score on this AMD processor is only, I think it's about 7,000. So Plex says that you need at least 2,000 per transcoded stream. I'm going from a 19 megabit per second file all the way down to usually two megabits per second because I had to kind of finagle the, the things to get into play sometimes. I was switching back and forth between three and 1.5 but on average they're two megabits per second. So Plex claims 2000, this processor has 7000. So it actually does kind of make sense where I can get three reliable streams, which would put me right at 6000. And sometimes I can get a fourth stream just kind of depending on the moment. Either way, my Ryzen processor is going to be here on Tuesday. So I can't wait to test what the P2000 can do with a real processor to back it up. So guys, stay tuned. My next follow-up video with the P2000 is going to be pairing it with the Ryzen. So will Ryzen bottleneck it at all? Will I be able to get 100% utilization through the P2000 GPU? I don't know. I'm excited to try this out. From what I know, the P2000 should do at least 20 or more streams at the same time. It just needs a powerful processor to back it up. So guys, of course, thank you for watching this. If you want to find out more, if you want to know what the Ryzen can do when paired with the P2000, definitely make sure to subscribe. Of course, a like and comment below. Thank you for watching and have yourself a good day.